lot of kids with us, but they're all involved with their sports, and that's very important for them, so that's fine. So it's just us three adults. Uh, we're local. I've been doing these dances since I was probably around 16, and then I quit, and then I started again in 18. Uh, there was a lady at Fort Lyon. She was a native of Mexico City, Senora Gonzalez, and she brought the Azteca dance groups to Los Animas. She spoke her native language, and she had all her children participate in the danza, and that's how I got involved when I saw them dancing. And then uh, when I first started dancing, my grandma didn't like it because she saw I was using the incense, and she said, ah, esas cosas son del diablo, you know, I don't want you, porque ella es muy católica. She said, no, I don't want you dancing with him. So I had to wait till I was 18 to start dancing, and uh, la señora told me, tell her that it's a baile folclorico. Baile folclorico, grandma. She said, oh, está bien, me encanta baile folclorico, está bien. You can dance with him. So I've been dancing since I was 18, and then I learned more when I went to San Diego with the natives over there from uh, across the border, the real Mexica people, the Aztecas and different tribes, and we had a lot of intertribal powwows. So these are authentic dances, and we're welcome at all the Azteca events and powwows. Uh, growing up in Los Animas, you know, I graduated from Los Animas High School in 71, and uh, Leonard's from Rocky Ford, and uh, Paul's from, Paul Sierra from Los Animas. We grew up about our, emphasizing our Spanish culture because many of our families spoke Spanish. But did they ever tell us about los indígenas, los indios? No, they were embarrassed, they were ashamed. Where did we get our brown skin from? It didn't come from the Españoles, from the Spaniards. Spaniards are Caucasian people, European. Our brown skin came from the natives of Mexico. You know, but they never told us our, our ancestry from Mexico. And nobody wanted to be called, especially if you're uh, in, growing up in the valley here, you're Spanish American. Wow, <laughs> we believe that. And I go, wait a minute, mom, we eat a lot of Mexican food. Tortillas, enchiladas, pozole, tamale. I go, how could that be Spanish food? They don't eat that in Spain. Those are native foods of Mexico. So now, for the past, especially in San Diego, the past 50 years, the Mexican-American community is very proud of their indigenous heritage, no longer ashamed of it. So they do the dances from Mexico, the native dances. Not everybody is Aztec. The Mexican name comes from the Aztec word M-E-X-I-C-A, Mexica, Mexica. It's also where the word Chicano comes from. The Aztec name Mexica. So it sound. And that was their way of getting back to their indigenous roots. If you do a DNA test, DNA tests have come a long way. They're very accurate. That's how they identify criminals. A strand of hair, a cell in the skin. But if you're Hispanic, you do a DNA test, it's inevitable you will come up with Native American heritage. They don't specify where, but it'll show how much percentage your ancestors are from the natives and how many were from Europe, the Espanoles. So now we're proud to do our dances from Mexico. We want to share our culture with you. Our first dance is called the Mother Earth Dance. Tonancin, si, our little mother. We have the copal here. The copal represents the prayers going up to the heavens. The same, it's exactly the same way that the Catholics use it. When they use incense from the Jewish, they got that from the Jewish religion, and the incense, and there's a scripture in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, that my prayers are like uh, incense going up to the heavens. And that's what this represents.
May I have a, a volunteer to pass out these candies to adults and to children, please? Would somebody like to just pass them out over here to these kids? No volunteers? <laughs> there it comes. Thank you, I appreciate it. So pass them out to whoever, anybody wants one. They can take as much as they want. We always try to give something. We're givers, not takers. And we never charge. That's our way of giving back to the communities of Los Animas and La Junta, Rocky Ford, Lamar. We dance for free, we never charge. It's our way of sharing our culture, and sharing our hearts with the community. Uh, I have a little bit of trivia here. The original natives of this land, does anybody know? I'm wondering if the schools are doing a good job of teaching you Colorado history. Does anybody know the last tribes that were here? There's two of them. There were many tribes that were here, but the last tribes that were here before they got relocated to reservations. Does anybody know who they are? The last tribes that were in La Hanna, Los Angeles, Lamar, Rocky Ford, the Kansas border, Pueblo. Anybody have an idea? Wow, La Hanna School District. You gotta teach that Colorado history. Okay, Alex. I'll give you a hint. The last tribe starts with a C. A C. Letter C. Uh, no. They were the Cheyenne and the Arapaho. Okay, they weren't the only tribes here. Before them were the Apache. Before them were the Comanche. Before them were the Kiowa. So those are the tribes that were in this area. Kiowa, Comanche, Apache, the last one, Cheyenne and Arapaho. And there's a the Cheyenne and Arapaho massacre. I'm sure you've heard that growing up in, in the school. They teach that in Los Animas, and they even have bus trips to the Sand Creek Massacre near Eads, 40 miles north of Lamar. That massacre occurred in Sand Creek. Uh, they had a reservation in Fort Lyon, but then the government disbanded that information the reservation, and they had to go camp out by Sand Creek. Well, anyway, because of a lot of Indian conflicts with the Europeans, a group of uh, volunteer people came all the way from Denver, and their, their intention was to massacre them, to kill them, and that's in Sand Creek. And they were told, their chief, chief, chief uh, Backkettle, flag to no avail, they still slaughtered them and they were mostly women and children because the men were out hunting so you got to know a little about that history and so the, the real Cheyenne and Nate and Arapaho they come down every year and they're in Eads around uh, the end of November when that anniversary you might want to take a trip out there and they're very welcoming and they have their ceremony our next dance is the rain dance we're asking uh, grandfather not to rain on our parade so maybe after it's all over, we'll get some rain.
There are uh, not just Aztecas living in Mexico. There are so many tribes there. There's over a hundred. And same with the United States. Probably at least 300. And Canada, Alaska. From Alaska, US, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Costa Rica, South America. There were only indigenous people here before the Spaniards invaded, before the Portuguese invaded. So they didn't kill all of them. They're still talking their language, practicing their, their, their ceremonies and their culture. They're not dead, they didn't kill everybody. Same with here in America. So a lot of tribes, not just one. So they are gonna speak a different native language. Now all tribes teach, it's interesting. They all have a different name for the great spirit, the giver of life. And they have the right concept. They were right on the nose. For example, the Aztecas call the creator the giver of life. El dador de la vida. The one that made the heavens and the earth. You know, I know a lot of people think when they first hear the Aztec, oh, those bloody, bloody savages, they killed a lot of people, they massacred, and they did human sacrifice, which is true. But not all of them did that. They'll never teach you that in the schools because they don't know that history. You look up on the internet, Hungry Coyote. And he existed way before the Spaniards existed. And he taught that there was only one creator called in Tlacue, in Naacue, and the Lord de la Vida, the giver of life. The one that made the heavens and the earth. And he made pyramids in Mexico dedicated to the giver of life. No sacrifices were allowed on those pyramids, no images, just the copal, and the water, and the fire. And also, the different tribes have different names. For example, the Maya call the creator <clears throat> the mighty breath. The Lakota, in South Dakota, North Dakota, the great spirit. The Cheyenne, the wise one above. The Kiowa, in Oklahoma right now, the great mystery. Notice, those names are gender free, neither male nor female. They have the right concept. The creator is a spirit, does not have sexual organs, is not a man, is not a woman. So, you know, when our Catholic missionaries try to convert them, they already knew that there is a creator, the one that's called the giver of life. And, you know, they weren't very good examples of being Catholic Christians by massacring so many natives in Mexico. Okay, so this is dedicated, this next dance, to Intlacue Naacue, at the Dor de la Vida. Our next dance is, um, from, I gotta look at this, the, the, my notes. I almost forget it. To the sun, Tonatiwa.
You know, a lot of Native American tribes, they're all in agreement. That respect for Mother Earth. So please, before you leave, throw all your trash in the proper receptacle. Keep Lahana beautiful. There's no reason to trash, just throw trash anywhere at random. And most American citizens are really good at that and not trashing out America. We want to keep America beautiful. So we don't trash it out. But you'd be shocked sometimes you go to third world countries, trash everywhere, the plastic bags, like nobody cares. So we have to have, we have to care for that. Also, Native Americans, they always say, how can man own the land? The idea is strange to us. You might as well try to buy and sell the sky, the sun, the moon, the air that we breathe, the water. How can we own it? So it was like, wow. Here this other culture comes and claims that we own this, we own this, this is ours. Well, how can you own it? It doesn't belong to us. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to Mother Earth. From the dust of the earth we were born, to the dust of the earth we shall return. That's when we get buried in the earth. So it makes a lot of sense. How can man own the land? The idea is strange to us. You might as well try to buy and sell the sky, the sun, the moon, and the earth. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to Mother Earth. Holy Mother Earth. The trees and all nature are witnesses of your thoughts and deeds. From the dust of the earth we were born. To the dust of the earth, we shall return. So thank you. And also, the animals are very important. Many times in San Diego where I live, they see a mountain lion and they want to kill it. I go, wait a minute. That mountain lion is going to the creek for a drink of water. Why did we build large communities in their vicinity? Where are they supposed to go? Common sense, if you take their home, they have no place to roam. So fortunately, we're in the open spaces out here in the country, so there's plenty of room for the animals, for the coyotes, not too many wolves anymore, and the rabbits, the possums, and all the wildlife. John Reservoir, Martin Reservoir is famous for all the wildlife there, the, especially all the hundreds of species of birds. So. We have to have respect for Mother Nature as well as for the creatures. Just because you see it come into your area, don't get a rifle and start killing it. Now there's a lot of places that are relocating those animals. A couple of years ago there was a bear. It wasn't a grizzly, it was a black bear in Los Animas. The authorities didn't kill it. They brought in wildlife from the state and they captured it. And they relocated that bear to the mountains in the area where it's supposed to be. Okay, our next dance is called um, uh, Aguila, no, it's gonna be called the Jaguar, Dance of the Jaguar. And it's to honor all the animals that exist on Mother Earth.
We want to thank Lahana for inviting us from Los Animas. It's always an honor to come and share our culture from Mexico with everybody here. And we hope we keep getting invited. Okay. Uh, it makes us happy to be here in our own home ground here. Lahana, Lamar, Los Animas, Rocky Ford. Uh, so thank you. Our last dance is the Aguila Blanca. It's also in honor of the eagle. And uh, it's going to be a procession. If anybody would like to follow us and learn a few steps, you're welcome. And uh, that will be our, our last dance. And the closing song, we always have a lot of songs, is in honor of Mother Teresa. You know, Mother Teresa helped a lot of um, unfortunate people that didn't have homes and that were hungry. So she gave her life to help those that were less fortunate. So this song is coming from Mother Teresa. And it's a reminder to teach everybody to treat other people with kindness. Your family, especially your mom, your dad, they made a lot of sacrifices. And sometimes the young kids don't realize all the sacrifice they went. You know, a lot of our family members even went without food so that the children can eat. That's a fact of history. So this is Mother, Pro Mother Teresa's prayer. Be the living expression of the Creator's kindness. Kindness in your face, kindness in your eyes, kindness in your smile. Never allow anyone to come to you without leaving better and happier. Kindness in your face, kindness in your eyes, kindness in your smile. Make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us show your love. The latter part of that song is from St. Francis of Assisi. His prayer, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us show your love. So our last dance, Aguila Blanca, you're welcome to participate with us in the procession. I'm sorry. No, you can't. No, you can't. You're fine. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, guys. From the Art Project in downtown La Junta, Colorado, for the Los Animas. Jaguar Warrior Azteca dancers and the people of Southeast Colorado. I'm Adrian Hart. <laughs>